You're listening to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast, episode number 47. Welcome to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. Music tech tips, lesson ideas, advice, news and interviews, especially for music teachers. Brought to you by midnightmusic.com.au. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. I'm Katie Wardrobe, a music technology education trainer, speaker and consultant from midnightmusic.com.au where I help music teachers use technology effectively in music education. Now, this episode is actually a continuation of some of the ideas that I started to talk about in the previous episode, which was episode 46. If you haven't already listened to that one, I'd probably recommend doing that first before listening to this episode. In this episode, we are going to cover something separate, but it's a continuation, as I mentioned, of the previous one. So in the first episode, we covered the reasons for creating an interactive display that uses audio and video, and I shared the first out of two possible ways that I wanted to share for you to achieve that. Now, the first way was by using QR codes, and in this episode, I want to take things up a up a level a little bit by using augmented reality, and that's namely with an app called Erasma. Hi, now it's Katie from the future here, just dropping in to say that as soon as I had finished recording this episode, I actually discovered, uh, because someone told me, that the Erasma app has changed its name. Now, it's been bought by the HP company, and so HP have changed the name of the app to HP Reveal. If you search for Erasma in the App Store, you'll still find it. It still comes up, which is good. But just so that you know, when you see it listed there as HP Reveal, you've got the right thing. Now, you're going to hear me refer to Erasma a lot in this episode, uh, but just know that that is what I'm talking about. All right, enjoy the rest. Erasma is an option that involves creating images for your wall that come to life. And it's a bit like the moving pictures that you see in newspapers in the Harry Potter movies. As soon as I saw this in action, that was what it reminded me of straight away. It's lots of fun. It's super effective. And even though the technology has been around for you know a few years now, it's still kind of stunning. I find it still has a great effect. When people see it in action, it has a great effect. So I wanted today to give you some examples of how some other music teachers are using Erasma in music education and also in some other subject areas and then talk you through the main steps that are involved. I'm going to leave out of the podcast episode the really detailed steps that are involved in doing this only because it's kind of a hard thing to describe in an audio format and it's going to be much better if you see the steps in some kind of tutorial video or written out at least online. Before you get nervous about the complexity involved in this process, I want to assure you it's really not that hard and there's plenty of online resources that will walk you through the process. So I'll link to a number of things in the show notes for this episode. I'll link to the Erasma website. So that's the name of the app that you can use to make these interactive images. It's also the same app that you use to view the images too. So if people want to come along and see your interactive image, they will need the same app. I'm going to link to some video examples of Erasma in action in education setting and some other video tutorials to create your own that have been created by teachers just like you. Now, all of the links will be at the page midnightmusic.com.au forward slash 47, which is today's episode number. So what is Erasma? So Erasma, as I mentioned, is an augmented reality app and you essentially have your iPad or your smartphone and you have the app installed. It's a free app. You open up the app, you scan a photo and the photo comes to life. Now, you might be wondering, how does this work? Does it work with any photo that I scan? It doesn't work with any photo. The photo actually needs to have uh, been set up in the first place for this to work. So somebody will set up the photo or the link to the interactive part of it ahead of time. And I'll talk through that process in a moment, how you actually go about setting up your own one. 
I want to talk through first some examples in music education, just so that you can see why you might want to use it and what benefit it might have taking the time to do this sort of thing. So some of the options include having performances of, of your students on display. I'm going to link in the show notes to Rebecca Dennis. She has a great website where she uses a lot of technology in her elementary classroom. And she has a fantastic YouTube video where she shows you her display wall in a corridor and it's got class performances on it. So it's just students doing things in class time, um, examples of things like, and I might be wrong here, but things like them performing ostinati that they've created or, um, you know, singing or playing in class. She walks along the wall and she shows you the image of the photo, I mean, the image of the students in performance. And then when she holds up her iPad, the image comes to life and the basically the, the students can be seen performing, singing or playing. Another teacher in the States, Cherie Herring, who I've been following for quite a long time and she does some amazing stuff with technology, she uses this with her recorder karate program and she has a wall of student faces in her school and when you scan one of the student faces, it will come up with a video of them performing their latest level, their latest achievement in the recorder karate program. Now, Cherie's uh, very clever because she uses it in another way as well, and that is to create teaching videos. So if a student wants to learn how to play a new note, let's say it's a low E on the recorder, Cherie actually has a display wall where it will say how to play the note E, and when you scan that little poster, it will come up with a video of her or even another student who knows how to play the note. And the video of is them teaching other students how to play that note, how to go about it and uh, make a nice sound with the note, how to not um, make that sort of cracking sound if it's a low note and so on. So it's really, really clever. I have another teacher that I know who's in New Zealand, Judith Bell, and she has created a, a display in her music centre which has uh, jazz ensemble performances and orchestral groups. So she has a basically like a notice board. You can go up and there are some pictures there and you can scan one of the pictures and that picture will come to life and her students will perform for you. So it's really great. It's still, as I mentioned before, it's really, um, you know, kind of stunning and interesting and, you know, it's just a great way to have some sort of interactive element on a static display. Other things that you can do are to create information, for instance, about composers. So if you can imagine you have a picture of Mozart on the wall and students could come along and if you've set this up ahead of time um, in, a, in an effective way, once students scan the picture of the composer, so Mozart in my example, Mozart might come to life and actually talk about his life and compositions. Uh, it could link just simply to a YouTube video that exists about his music or examples of his perform of uh, his compositions being performed. If you had a worksheet, you could have a video that's linked to a worksheet. Uh, an image on the worksheet, which gives students examples of what they need to do. So one of the videos I'll link to in the show notes is another teacher, and he has an example of a blues worksheet, which I think is for perhaps year seven or eight. And in that e worksheet, the students need to write lyrics for a blues song. So he has a little th image that the students can scan. And when they do that, it plays a video of an example of a blues piece with lyrics and he talks through the structure, or it shows text on the screen, talking them through the structure of the lyrics and how um, line one and line two are usually the same. And then line three is a little bit different, but at the end of that line, it rhymes with line one and two. So things like that, it just talks through the lyrics structure. Now this makes worksheets really interactive. It adds a multimedia element and it can be a big help for you as a teacher. So if students are not quite clear on how to answer a question, having something like that there can just allow them to perhaps watch the video and they might solve the issue themselves without you needing to go across and help them. Now another one that I've seen Cherie do is she's got a picture of a clarinet, so she's doing an instruments of the orchestra unit. She has a picture of a clarinet 
And what she's done is actually made a video with that with that picture of the clarinet. She's actually made a video where the clarinet kind of looks like it starts talking and the clarinet talks all about itself, about what sort of instrument it is and the fact that it's a single reed instrument and this is the style of music that it plays and this is the era that it came along and, and so on. So once again, it's just a nice different way to present information that you might already be doing with your students. Let's talk about what's needed, so how you actually create these Erasmus images. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to just talk through kind of broad concept here and then if you want detailed instructions, if you want to give it a go yourself, you can uh, check out some of the links on the show notes page. So just to repeat that link for the show notes page, it's midnightmusic.com.au forward slash 47, the number 47. So to create these interactive images, you need three things. You need, first of all, a trigger image. That's what it's called, a trigger image. And that is the image that you will scan. So you need to print out some kind of image that's going to be the image that the person will scan to see the video. So that's the first thing you need. The second thing you need is to have made the video that the person is going to see when they scan the image. Now that's called the overlay. So this is the terminology that Erasmus uses when you go to set things up. You have the trigger image, then you have the overlay, which is the video. And the last thing you need, only three things, is a channel. And this is something you'll set up on the Erasmus site. You set up your own channel and that is the place where you store your content the overlays that you're going to have linked to images. So three things, a trigger image, an overlay, and your channel. So you only need to set your channel up once, and the other two things you'll set up each time you do a new interactive image. This episode of the Music Tech Teacher Podcast is brought to you by the Midnight Music Community. The Midnight Music Community is an online space for music teachers who'd like help using technology in their music lessons. There are online courses, video tutorials, lesson plans, music tech news and professional development certificates are provided for any training that you undertake. I'm inside the community every day, personally answering members' questions and sharing tips and ideas. The best thing is that you get to connect with hundreds of other music teachers just like you and share your own experiences and occasional music tech frustrations. For more information, and a special joining price just for the listeners of this podcast, visit midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. That's midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. The overall process is that you will make your video first. So that, that would be step one. You make the video or find a video that you're going to use and you upload it to your Erasmus channel. So that's the bit that I mentioned is called the overlay. The second thing is that you'll create the image that you want to have on display, the trigger image, and that's the thing that the person's going to scan. Now, options for the trigger image, you can use any image. The image actually does not need to look like the video that's going to play. They can be two completely separate things. So as an example of two separate things, you might have a picture of a butterfly and when someone scans that, it plays a video of Taylor Swift singing. So the image and the video don't need to be visually connected as such but it kind of looks really awesome if they are. And this is much um, more the case where you get that Harry Potter effect of an image coming to life is actually when the, the still image matches the first part of the video and then it looks awesome because it comes to life. So instead of having something unrelated, you could have a related video. And what I've done and what most people do to make this look, you know, like the, the image comes to life is once you've made your video, you actually scroll back to the very first frame of that video and you take a screenshot. So I'm sure you've done this before. If you've got iPads, you might know that you can take a screenshot of whatever's on your screen. So if you were looking at the video that you've made on your iPad, you could press the home button and the power key simultaneously and you'll hear a chicky, like a camera sound, and that will take a still image of the first frame of your video. And that can be the thing that you use to print out and put on the wall. 
Now, if you don't have iPads, it doesn't matter. You don't need to do it on the iPad. Uh, if you're on a laptop, for instance, you could look at the video on your laptop and you can take a screenshot of that first frame while you're on your laptop instead. Now, there's different ways to take screenshots on laptops. Uh, Mac and PC both have inbuilt ways, uh, a shortcut that you can press that will take a screenshot. So whichever method you use, you end up with a still image of the first frame of the video and you need to print that image out. After you've printed that image out, then you go through the process within the Erasma app to essentially link the printed image to the video that you've made. As I mentioned, it's not a really hard process. Erasma walks you through what you need to do. And once they're linked, then you're kind of finished and that's all you need to do. And someone with the Erasma app can come along, scan your picture and the image will come to life. There are a few tips. I'm going to talk through just a few little tips if you've tried this maybe and haven't had um, success in the past or if you want to give it a go and want a few tips to keep in mind before you get started. I'll talk through uh, those now. I'll also link to a tutorial video or two that show you the process in detail and Erasmus has lots of good information on their website too. So a couple of tips. With the trigger image, there's a few little tricks to making a good trigger image. Now, a good trigger image is one that when you scan it, it will activate that video to start up. There are some images um, that you might create where the app just doesn't seem to like them so much. It won't trigger the, the video to start. And the ones that are good, that work really well, have color contrast in the image itself and kind of like lots of details throughout the picture. Busy is good in this case. You don't often hear, <laughs> hear it recommended that a busy picture is a good picture. Often we're trying to keep things very simple. But in this instance, details throughout the picture are good because it means that the app will more easily read the image. You don't want the overall image too dark either. So if you've got a picture of a student, for instance, and that's going to be your trigger image, you don't want it to be too dark. You want to see contrast, light and dark and color contrast and distinguishable shapes and so on. So that's it for the image. My, um, my advice is to simply print something out and give it a go. And if it's not working, then, you know, you'll find something else. I haven't had many issues with trigger images, but I know some people have had, you know, there are times where they've just had to try a couple of different things. Now, when you're creating your videos, the video that's going to show when you scan the image, they need to be sort of fairly short. So you might not be having an entire concert play. You know, once you've scanned an image, it's not going to be the entire jazz ensemble concert. I would think of it like excerpts. So short class ensemble pieces are usually going to be okay because they are short. If it's a long piece that you've played in some kind of band competition, you might need to just feature the first part of it or a small excerpt. And teaching videos, if you're using it for teaching videos, once again, keep them short. That's a good tip anyway when you're creating teaching videos because, uh, you know, people's attention is, is held with a short video and not so much with a longer one. And if you have a concept that needs to be taught and it is quite long, you can always split it into part one and part two. So that's tips for videos. Now, the last section of tips I'm going to give is for basically for the people who are going to scan your pictures and so if you imagine you've got parents coming to your school and you've got this nice wall display and you want them to be able to scan the images to see their kids performing and doing things in your music classroom there's a couple of things they need to do first to be able to actually scan them the first one is that they need to download the Erasmus app and that's a free app and the second thing is they do need to follow your Erasmus channel where you store all your videos in order to see the, the videos play when they scan the images. Now, those two things are not very hard. And what I've seen most teachers do is at the beginning of the wall, they'll put up some instructions for the teacher, other teachers or students or parents that are coming to look at that wall. They'll put some instructions up at the very beginning, say, hey, you need to download Erasmus, it's free. And step two, you need to follow my channel. So once they've downloaded Erasmus, they open it up and they search for your channel and they will click follow. 
simple process. Now, they only need to do that thing once. So if a parent came to your school and looked at your interactive wall and they got themselves set up with the Erasma app and followed your channel on perhaps day one of school term, maybe not day one, you might not have stuff up that quickly, let's say the end of uh, the first term of school, then when they come back to the school maybe a few weeks later, they don't need to download the app again. They don't need to follow your channel again. They've already done that. They can just go straight up to your new pictures that you've got on the wall and scan them without having to do those first steps again. I hope that makes sense. As I said, it's hard to kind of describe this, um, you know, in an audio sense, but do go and check out some of the links that you'll see in the show notes. It's lots of fun and I just think it it elevates things a little bit. Um, Yeah, just lots of fun. I think you need to kind of see it in action to appreciate how effective it can be. And I've been showing Erasma in workshops for a number of years now and the novelty definitely has not worn off at all. And it still gets a great reaction from people who have never seen it before and people who have seen it before as well. I still get a kick out of seeing new examples of the way people are using the app and there are some great ones online. There are some other examples too which are non-music examples. So there are some art teachers that are using it, maths teachers, I think it's really useful also watching those videos because if you see what an art teacher is using it for, it might actually kind of trigger an idea in your mind for how you can use it in music. I saw a maths one just as an example, which was a, a maths problem, which was written out. So something complex. I'm not a very good mathematician, but let's say it's a complex kind of um, problem written out then when you scanned it, if you couldn't solve it yourself, when you scanned it, it actually showed someone writing out the answer with all the working. So it kind of came to life as if someone had just sat down next to you and was helping you to solve this problem. And I thought, wow, that's fabulous. And I was thinking at that time, you could do that perhaps with music notation. You know, maybe you've set the students a task to write out. Um, maybe they need to draw a treble clef at the beginning of the stave. Then they need to write out a rhythm or some kind of melody. And if they're a little bit stuck on how to do that, maybe they're not quite sure which way stems need to go for notes or, or something else or how to form a treble clef. You could have an Erasma video which walks them through the process and shows you actually doing it in the video. So that's just a few ideas. Do go and check out the links in the show notes and I hope you'll give it a go. I'd love to hear from you if you do manage to give it a go and take a look at it in action and tell me what you think. Like the QR code process that I talked about in the previous episode, this process for using Erasmus is actually going to be part of a new course that I'm developing for the members of my Midnight Music community, which is a professional development community for music teachers who want to know a bit more about technology in education. It's tentatively called the Music Tech Boot Camp, Essential Skills for Music Teachers at this stage, and it's going to cover lots of great tech skills and examples of how you can use them in the music in your music classes. So if you'd like to join the community and get access to that course when it comes out, you can head to midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. The Music Tech Teacher podcast is hosted by me, Katie Wardrobe. You can find more information and links from today's episode at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash 47. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.